Hello and welcome to Elector News Bytes, a show dedicated to updates from the world of electronics and semiconductors. I'm your host, Stuart Cording, the electronics reporter. In this month's show, I'll be exploring getting inductors onto silicon, seeing how we're tackling the skills shortage in US fabs, clarifying how automotive cameras can improve their vision, and introducing a new tyre pressure monitoring sensor. However, if you're in a hurry, use the description below this video or podcast to jump straight to the topics that interest you. Otherwise, let's get started. With the advent of USB-C and its power delivery specification, the power aspect of the USB port has changed beyond recognition. USB can now deliver up to 48 volts and power levels of 480 watts. Critical in such applications are high efficiency, low heat dissipation and exceptional power density so that more compact chargers can be built. To support engineers developing such applications, Solana Semiconductor has launched a new evaluation board featuring their SZPL 3002A DC-DC converter IC. This intelligent BUP converter supports the development of 65 watt multi-port USB PD and QC fast chargers with its two type C and one type A USB ports. Depending on the port, efficiency is of up to 97% are possible. The switching frequency is 667 kHz with a soft start time of 8 milliseconds, while an I2C interface opens up a path to adding further ports. Target applications go beyond chargers to include power strips, displays and televisions, and laptops in their docking stations. With world leaders taking the stage to promote investment in semiconductor manufacturing in both the US and EU, many are wondering where the workers will be coming from that will operate the fabs being built. According to a report by the Semiconductor Industry Association, the industry is expected to grow 33% by 2030. However, efforts must be made to ensure future chip factory technician roles can be filled. Intel is tackling this with a new community college course in Ohio that should deliver the technical skills needed for an entry-level technician position. The course includes an introduction to manufacturing, semiconductor technology and vacuum systems. Furthermore, the necessary math and science content is embedded in the relevant courses to help raise confidence among students. Those interested in the program are encouraged to contact Intel in Ohio and any of its other facilities across the US. Mechanical systems are, as far as possible, being replaced with electronic alternatives helping to improve reliability and support the demand for miniaturization. Recognising this is Rome with a new tiny proximity sensor that measures just 1x2mm. The RPR0720 is perfect for applications that monitor attachment and detachment, such as charging cases for Bluetooth earbuds. The sensor relies on a vertical cavity surface emitting laser or V-cell that offers much higher directivity than an LED. As a result, the sensing surface can be shrunk down, reducing the area by as much as 78% compared to conventional products. The proximity sensor operates from a 2.7 to 4.5 volt supply, making it ideal for lithium ion battery powered applications. If you're keen to try the sensor out, an evaluation board is also available. This episode is sponsored by Downstream. Downstream Technologies software helps engineering organisations optimise and automate the PCB release process. Downstream's tools redefine how engineers and PCB designers post process designs to create and distribute all the deliverables required for a complete assembly release package. Their flagship product, CAM350, provides verification and optimization before designs are transferred to the fabricator that ensure the successful manufacture of bare PCB boards. 
Also available is Blueprint PCB, which uses its CAD database to quickly produce comprehensive documentation to drive PCB fabrication, assembly and inspection processes. More information about Downstream can be found at downstreamtech.com. When it comes to motor control, engineers typically have one of two options when selecting their silicon. The first is a black box approach that allows tuning to match the parameters of the motor. The second is a fully programmable microcontroller supported by software that allows other elements of the application to be tackled too. Nuvaton's latest series of MCUs fall in the latter category, targeting high efficiency motor control in consumer, enterprise and industrial applications. The new KM1 M4BF uses an ARM Cortex M4F core operating at up to 120 MHz and features up to 256 kilobytes of flash and 16 of SRAM. Thanks to eight sets of motor and power control PWMs, it's possible to control two motors and a PFC simultaneously. The peripherals also include safety features and fault detection functions to support the IEC 6730 standard. While driving at night with headlights reflecting from a rain-drenched road, you're right to wonder how autonomous vehicles will ever be able to handle all possible road conditions. After all, if you can't see the road markings or the way ahead, how can automotive sensors do it? This is a challenge that OnSemi have been tackling with their Hyperlux image sensors. Offering a dynamic range of 150 dB, they can distinguish between a yellow and red stoplight at distance, even when facing a setting sun, a situation where human eyes would likely be blinded. They also perform favorably under low light conditions, capturing people, animals and objects that can be difficult to see while driving. Ensuring this technology is supported by automotive manufacturers, OnSemi have just announced that Hyperlux drivers are now available on NVIDIA's Drive platform. Ensuring this powerful technology combination is easily integrated into this open and scalable AI system. Integration of AI capability into embedded systems continues to be in demand, but not everyone is an expert in machine learning or shrinking models from training platforms to the, by comparison, tiny size of a microcontroller. Sweden-based IAR, a leader in embedded development software and services, is helping their developers with a collaboration with Edge Impulse, one of the best named names in, names in embedded AI. The collaboration sees the Edge Impulse platform integrated into IAR's embedded workbench, providing a clean development workflow. The system enables seamless generation of predictive ML models from which the optimized C or C++ code can be generated. The feature is currently being rolled out as a premium add-on to IAR's developers for users of ARM-based microcontrollers. With strong uptake for electric vehicles, suppliers are responding to the changing needs of the automotive industry. But it's not just private vehicles where this change is happening. Commercial vehicles from buses and trucks to construction vehicles are also making the change. Delivering the necessary DC voltage for both hybrid and fully electric vehicles is Bell Power Solutions with their second generation 4 kilowatt liquid cooled DC DC converter. Compared to the previous generation, it supports a wider 450 to 900 volt input range and weighs just four and a half kilograms. Efficiencies of up to 95% are possible and its high reliability, low noise output offers excellent dynamic response to load and input changes. The unit can also be configured in parallel with seven further units and offers optional unified diagnostic services, CAN-FD, and cybersecurity. security. 
Industrial applications demand durable human-machine interfaces that operate over a wide temperature range that remain available for years. This helps to ensure operation and long-term support for applications as diverse as industrial processing equipment, EV charging stations, digital signage and ticketing systems. Seiko has announced a scalable HMI family of modular displays for such cross-industry applications. The new platform builds upon Seiko's existing ARM and x86 technologies with sizes of 7, 10 and 15 inches, resolutions of up to full HD and brightnesses of greater than 400 candela per square meter. Each model offers a different processor and memory option along with a range of interfaces such as Gigabit Ethernet, RS-485, CAN, USB and digital I.O. While there have been huge advancements in integration in the semiconductor industry over the years, there are some components that remain stubbornly on the printed circuit board as discrete or surface mount components. However, the growth in technologies such as 5G infrastructure and next generation radar and satellite communications means that more compact RF filters, matching networks and balans are needed. XFAB, an analog and mixed signal silicon foundry, has announced their new integrated passive device or IPD fabrication capabilities. The XIPD process is a 130 nanometer silicon on insulator technology that leverages an engineered substrate together with a thick copper metallization layer. This allows customers to integrate inductors, capacitors and resistors onto their designs to deliver significant space and cost savings. XFAB's RF Technology Director Greg Uren noted that they are already working on projects needing 70 to 80 GHz operation, which would be unthinkable using a discrete passive arrangement. Tire pressure monitoring systems can increase your safety on the road through improved vehicle handling, decreased tire wear and reduced braking distance but one significant benefit is improved fuel economy. The electronics industry has done much to optimize and miniaturize the technology and Infineon has recently added a new sensor to its portfolio for this application. The Xsensive SP49 integrates a MEM sensor alongside an ASIC that includes a powerful 32-bit ARM Cortex-M0 Plus core, flash and RAM memory and low power monitoring peripheral. The sensor targets a range of TPMS capabilities, including on-tire auto position sensing, tire inflation assistance, tire blowout detection, and load detection. The device is pin-for-pin -pin replacement for its previous generation sensor and targets both sub-gigahertz and Bluetooth low energy systems. So that wraps it up for this month's episode of News Bytes. If you'd like to learn more about the technologies highlighted, check out the accompanying description and links. Should you have a news update you'd like to share, please drop me a line to tell me more. You'll find my contact details on the Elector website. Or if you prefer, connect with me, Stuart Cording, on LinkedIn or follow me on Twitter. While you're here, please like, subscribe to Electoral TV Industry on YouTube or give us a rating on whatever podcast platform you're listening to us on. Thanks for joining and hopefully we'll see you for Electoral News Bites next time.